Dexter season two review. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little review on Dexter season two. Now, Dexter was a show that if you had asked me before rewatching, I would say that seasons one, two, and four of Dexter were near perfect. They were almost like a full length show turned into a movie, movie quality, everything. Absolutely love this stuff. So I watched the first season of Dexter and although I really enjoyed it, there was a lot of little aspects about it that weren't really my favorite. I didn't really feel like it hit on all cylinders. I felt like it was a little bit slow. I found that it would probably be better with 10 episodes instead of 12, but it just wasn't this masterpiece like I remembered. And I was wondering, I'm like, are any of these seasons really gonna seem like the top level show that I remember. And yes, they do, starting with this season. So season two, I will be getting into spoilers, just letting you guys know right away. There's no real way for me to dive into this season without going into spoilers. But I do highly recommend that if you have not seen Dexter, go ahead, watch season one, watch season two, at least through season four, because it is that good. If you think it sucks, come back, let me know, and I'll dive into it here. We're gonna be doing some spoilers. So basically Dexter season two, is like Dexter on crack in my opinion. It is way more intense, it is way more crazy, it is way more dark, it is way more emotional, and it is way more entertaining in my opinion than season one. The basic premise of season two is Deb is destroyed because she was dating the ice truck killer, so she's living with Dexter. Dexter is getting tailed by Sergeant Dokes. I do think we could have had a few more seasons of Dokes. We didn't need to open it with him just going gung-ho after Dexter, but Dokes is after Dexter, so Dexter can't really get away to do any kills. That's basically where we're at. And then eventually in the first episode, they end up finding Dexter's bodies. So now the Bay Harbor Butcher is the main person that they're looking for this season, which is Dexter. So he's basically pretending or trying to throw people off his trail because he's actually working on finding himself. So let's jump into the pros that I have with this season. The pros was the pacing. Now, again, I wanna say that no Dexter up until this point has had perfect pacing for me. I think they all, every single season would be better with 10 episodes but the pacing was so, so enjoyable here. I found myself kind of struggling at some point to get through a bunch of episodes of season one and even season three, but season two was like, I just could not put it down. I think I watched four episodes in one sitting right off the bat. This thing was just so well paced and so entertaining. And for some reason, um, this was just so rewatchable. I don't know if it was because of the entertainment value or because it was so edgy and intense, but I was thinking while I was watching this, if I wanted to just put one Dexter on and just fly through a season, this seems like the season that I would pick. Uh, again, um, I just started season four, so maybe season four will be that season for me. But wow, do I just absolutely love everything about season two. And it is just so rewatchable in my opinion. I don't know why, but it just it has the least amount of cringy scenes, the most entertainment, the, more, the most just raw emotion, and I just love it. Again, I'm gonna be kind of beating a dead horse with this. I'm probably gonna say this in every single Dexter review that I do. I think they should have been 10 episodes because um, I absolutely loved Lila, but basically, once Dexter actually gets with Lila, and then he kind of is like, eh, I don't know if I'm feeling Lila. There's not much interesting things that happen after that. So, I mean, that happens in episode maybe seven or eight. He's kind of over her. It would have been nice if, if she kind of forced him into like some more sexual encounters later on because it was just, the scenes were so juicy and so just, Oh my goodness, like such great TV. It was kind of stupid to see her for like four or five episodes just literally kind of doing nothing. Dexter's over her, he's not gonna do anything with her. And I feel like the ending wasn't as good, but I absolutely loved Lila. I think she's probably the most entertaining character besides the main characters of the show that, and all of Dexter. I just absolutely loved her. She was so engaging and gets under your skin. I absolutely loved Lila. I also like that Rita was a hair more independent here. In the first season, she just seems so broken and kind of like destroyed. 
And here she has a lot more of her own opinions and it's just she's just easier to watch for me in this season versus season one. Dexter being a terrible partner to Rita is just really cringy and it just happens so, so, so much. The fact that he's not with Rita most of this time kind of gets rid of that cringy aspect of, oh, Dexter's just kind of like a dumb little man boy and doesn't know how to treat a girl. You kind of get rid of that in this season because Rita's kind of off on her own and she's more independent. Frank Lundy, now I don't really lo like love this guy's character for like the actor, or I don't think he should have been in like every single season of Dexter, but for this season, I think that Frank Lundy was a perfect addition to the cast. He adds a bit of maturity he can basically step over anybody. If he sees something that's out of line, he could call anybody out at any time. But at the same time, he's kind of oddly fair. You end up kind of liking him because he's fair. Yeah, he will just raise hell, but if you have a legitimate thing, he will actually help you and be behind you. I felt like it was a great transition from the ice truck killer to him. Man, I just didn't want this season to end. Lundy was a great addition, even coming after Dexter. He was just the perfect thing to just mix things up for one season and get him out. Again, I wouldn't want to see him in every single season, but I loved him in this one. It's intense, it's emotional, it's dark. And the last thing I will say about this season that I really, really enjoyed was the scenery. I love the Miami scenery. That kind of makes Dexter, even on the worst seasons of Dexter, just all the different you know music and scenery they have, it really just takes you away to another place like Miami and it is so nice. I had to throw that in there. I'll probably put scenery as a pro in every single season of Dexter because I love it so, so much. I kind of liked Rita's mom for this season. She wasn't in here the whole time, but she served a good purpose. She's kind of narcissistic. You can kind of see why Rita is so kind of destroyed because her mom doesn't help her like at all. Her mom's all about herself. Her mom's kind of burying her in her past relationships and it kind of gives her a story arc, something to handle, something to come get over with and now she's a stronger person to go back with Dexter at the end. I thought it was a pretty good, again, I wouldn't want to see her in a bunch of seasons, but for half the season, I thought she was good. Okay, my mixed aspects, I only have one, and this is ruining the Harry and Laura kind of story. In the original Dexter, Harry was the first point on the scene. Harry saw Dexter and was just felt so bad that Dexter was in a pool of blood that he adopted him. And that was a very wholesome, very nice story. Here, they take that initial narrative and they just twist the shit out of it. Harry kills himself because he's so disgusted by Dexter, which was like, wow, that's that's like the real big curveball. And then he makes it so Harry gets with Dexter's biological mom. And I'm like, okay, this is getting a little drama heavy. That's getting a little crazy. And then they make it so like his mom got killed because she was with Harry. So they just really twist the entire narrative of the first season and they just make it almost unrecognizable. And the reason I put this in the mix is because it was kind of annoying seeing Harry in every single episode of season one. It was almost literally like every episode of season one needs a flashback with Harry and Dexter. And I like the flashbacks with Harry and Dexter, but when it's in every single episode, it just felt a little forced. So by destroying the Harry and Laura kind of story, it takes away from that episode to episode thing about Harry and kind of makes him more sporadic and more situational instead of every single episode. So I kind of like that they they put Harry kind of in the back burner, but at the same time, the way that they did it with the story was just kind of crazy. And then the cons, and I really don't have too many cons with this one, but the main one, and it's a little bit hard to describe, is that this is really unlike what you think of when you think of Dexter. Like when I think of Dexter, I think of he's in control most of the season. He's kind of out of control most of the season. He's flustered in the beginning because he needs a kill and then he like can't kill the guy. And then he's kind of like taken over by Lila. And then at the very end, he's kind of himself. And then you think of, okay, Deb lives on her own, but no, Deb lives with Dexter. Dexter has kills every episode. Not really here. He starts off being afraid to kill somebody. Then he gets good at killing. Then he gets with Lila and Lila gets him to stop killing. And then he kills like who he needs to at the end to make the season all work out. So there's not really a, a killer of the week. It was just very unlike typical Dexter. Like you think of Harry as the voice of reason. Harry's just a dick this season. Like Harry's like almost the reason for all of Dexter's problems this season. So 
Everything I think of when I think of Dexter was flipped upside down with this season. And in season three, they bring it much more back to like a more light Dexter. He's by himself. He's on good terms with Rita. That's another thing. He's on bad terms with Rita the entire time with this one, which is unlike Dexter, you think of most of the time, he's on good terms with Rita, not here. So they just flip everything that you think about of Dexter upside down. But at the same time, it was so freaking entertaining that I didn't really mind it as much. Another con that I have was killing Dokes so soon. Man, Dokes is such an entertaining character. I freaking love Dokes. And it's like, okay, you have to kill him. At least kill him at the end of three or four. Like, he's such a great character. Like, give me a few more seasons with him, you know? It's almost like we had that first season. And then this season, he's kind of like all over Dexter. And then he's kind of like this loose cannon this season. So you don't even get full Dokes, in my opinion. So... I hate it that they killed Dokes so soon because I loved his character and he was just part of that Miami Metro vibe for me 100%. Although I do like Quinn in future episodes and future seasons, he's just not as good as Dokes, I'm sorry. Okay, the pacing at the beginning and the end. Now, I'm probably gonna say this with every single season of Dexter because when I thought of Dexter, I thought it was either eight or 10 episodes and they're all 12. And in my opinion, that's just a little too much for the story that they're trying to tell. And I felt the beginning and the end of this season was actually pretty slow. Now, from my understanding, from rewatching the Dexters, the first two episodes are really slow in almost every single Dexter. They don't really kind of start picking up to at least episode three. So the first two episodes I felt were a little slow in this Dexter, a little bit of cringy, he's failing, he doesn't know how to kill, kind of hard to watch. And then I felt like the last two episodes or the last couple episodes were just really, really slow. I think he gets Dokes trapped in like episode eight. And then he's done like flirting and having sex with Lila around episode seven or eight. So it's like you get four episodes of like kind of nothing because he's not getting with Lila. So we're just basically waiting till he finishes her off. And then Dokes, he's trapped in a, I mean, the very last episode, lots of stuff happened at once. It was almost too much happening at once, but I felt like it slowed way down by the end. I would say the middle of this season was perfect. So. I felt like it was a little bit slow in the beginning and the end, but this is probably the best paced Dexter. I'm on uh, season four and already it's really, really slow. I'm not gonna lie. So anyways, guys, season two of Dexter might be my favorite personal season. And I like that it's not so popular in you know, people's favorites. People usually like season four of Dexter the best. And I absolutely really, really like this one. It's been a long time since I revisited it. I don't know if I've seen it twice before this or only once, I've for sure seen it, but it was, fantastic to revisit it i loved it and i definitely recommend checking out dexter one two and four so anyways guys we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and i couldn't do it without any of you guys help you guys are the best i'm having a great day out here hopefully having a great day at home see you on the next video peace